tonight as we come on the air, storms slamming the east just as millions now travel for the holiday. Washington, D.C. and Maryland, the tornado warning there as this system now moves north. Philadelphia, New York, the same system that brought that deadly tornado. Homes destroyed and tearing through Missouri's capital. An EF3 tornado there. Winds 160 miles per hour. Rob Marciano again tonight timing this out with millions of Americans now on the move. It's a remarkable moment playing out late today at the White House. The president calling on staff members on live TV so they could tell the American people the president kept his cool in that meeting with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, then calling himself a stable genius. John Carl standing by live. Set free tonight, the American who left the U.S. spent time at an Al-Qaeda training camp captured after 9-11. Tonight, he's now been released from prison for good behavior. Some authorities warn he still has terrorist sympathies. He will live in the U.S. where he's headed to. has terrorist sympathies. He will live in the U.S. where he's headed tonight. The owner of a daycare under arrest tonight accused of leaving a four-month-old baby girl in a daycare van. The baby did not survive. We have reported on the eight-year-old girl pulled from her mother, that kidnapper racing off, eight hours later rescued from a hotel room. But tonight here, what we did not know, authorities had been to that room earlier in the day, even questioning the suspect, not seeing the girl. Gas prices tonight as this holiday approaches, the five states where it's the cheapest and where it's most expensive. And all of the family of the Jeffersons and their comeback. The music, the flub on live TV that had them all laughing, and the surprise behind that door. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. We have a lot to get to tonight, and we begin with those storms raging in the east at this hour, just as millions now travel for the long holiday weekend. A tornado warning near Washington, D.C. for a time, the capital disappearing in that storm late today. That same system moving north at this hour, it brought an EF3 tornado in the middle of the country, winds of 160 miles per hour in Missouri. There was a direct hit on the capital, Jefferson City. You can see the homes just destroyed and tossing pickup trucks and cars on top of one another. All of this as tonight 55 million Americans from the plains to the northeast are now in the path of these severe storms just as this holiday nears. Meteorologist Rob Marciano has the track and the timing tonight. He's in the storm zone. Tonight, tornado warnings and power flashes in the Washington, D.C. area. That powerful storm system racing east after violent tornadoes pummeled the heartland overnight. Tornado sirens sounding the alarm in Missouri. That thing is a block in front of my house. And it's going to get so dark, nobody's going to see it. Light flashes revealing an especially dangerous nighttime twister moving toward Jefferson City. A rare tornado emergency in Missouri's capital. From what I'm hearing, we've got multiple people trapped. The tornado took the roof off. They had a female that's bleeding. They're talking about possible amputations. Daybreak revealing the devastation. Residents trying to salvage what they can after an EF3 twister winds up to 160 miles per hour, ripping off roofs. The ferocious tornado with enough force to knock over this semi and then go right into this neighborhood. Roof tile, lumber, insulation strewn all about, snapping these trees in half, destroying people's lives, crossing a major highway miles before it even gets to Jefferson City. And at this car dealership, vehicles were thrown like toys. Well, it's pretty amazing if you look close. Kevin Riley's family has owned this and business for three generations. What are they saying when they see your lot like this? Um, <sighs> praying for you. Yeah. How's that made you feel? You got that kind of support Solid. here? Solid. Really good, yeah. First responders, some using dogs, going door to door. Thankfully, everyone in town is accounted for tonight. It's incredible how much heavy damage there is and how nobody died here. The only words I can put it, the word I can put it is the word miracle. Tragically, in Golden City, Missouri, three people were killed when the storm hit there. In Oklahoma, days of rain making rivers rage, taking out homes. Runaway barges careening downstream. Watch as they get sucked into a dam. Officials now releasing more than 1.8 million gallons of water per second from the Keystone Dam and sounding sirens to warn residents downstream of impending flooding. All right, so let's get right back to Rob Marciano again tonight, now reporting in from Jefferson City, Missouri. Just stunning pictures there, Rob. And I know you're following yet another active situation as we head into the evening. What's the track? 
Well, so much dynamics in this atmosphere and how much power with this storm. I mean, when you see these pictures, full-size SUVs, heavy trucks piled on top of each other, tossed like toys, more back there, 800 vehicles here, all of which are damaged, some of which will be totaled. Of course, they're grateful that no one was killed here miraculously. But the energy from this system, part of it going through the Northeast, as David mentioned, here it is on the radar. We still have a couple of thunderstorm watches are posted, but it's going mostly offshore. we got another pulse coming through tonight uh, through West Virginia, and then another setup here in the Plains tornado. Watch out for the, for the Texas Panhandle and flood warnings for Tulsa, Wichita, Springfield. That's going to be a problem because over the next couple days, these storms will produce some heavy rain along with severe weather across Oklahoma City during the day tomorrow and through Wichita. That's the flood zone. Kansas City as well. You see that system doesn't move too much, so that threat will continue right through the weekend. David? Unfortunately, we'll be watching it all. Rob, our thanks to you again tonight. We move on this evening to that unexpected moment playing out late today at the White House. President Trump calling on staff members on live TV so they could tell the American people that he had kept his cool in that meeting with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Late today, he called Pelosi a mess, calling himself a stable genius. And tonight, Speaker Pelosi's response just in. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today accused the president of picking a fight with Democrats to create a distraction from his problems, saying he exploded in anger before walking out of their meeting at the White House yesterday. The president again stormed out. I think, what, first pound the table, walk out the door. Another ten temper tantrum. I pray for the president of the United States. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. The president was watching the speaker's comments and clearly didn't like what he heard. Sort of a nasty type statement, but I will say this. She, wa she said I walked into the room right next door yesterday and walked in and started screaming and yelling. Just the opposite. Just the opposite. She's a mess. The president then began calling on his aides one by one to say that he had been totally calm. Oh, he was First, he Kellyanne was Conway. Kellyanne, what was my temperament yesterday? In the very room? calm, very temperate. And the White House press secretary, too. Hi, Sarah. We're just talking about the meeting. You were there yesterday? Yes, were you? Sir. Yes. Just come forward. Does anybody know Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, uh, we're just talking about the meeting yesterday. Uh, the narrative was I was screaming and ranting and raving, and it was terrible. And I watched Nancy, and she was all crazy yesterday. She put the hands and everything. Just out of curiosity, you were there. What was my tone yesterday at the meeting? Uh, very calm. I've seen both, and this was definitely yeah. not uh, <laughs> angry or ranting. Pelosi says the president wants Democrats to start the process of impeaching him. Do you want to be impeached? I don't think anybody wants to be impeached. But he continues to insist he won't do business with Democrats until they stop investigating him. He also accused the speaker of losing it, saying she doesn't understand the issues, but he does. I'm an extremely stable genius. Let's get to John Carl live at the White House watching this unfold all day long. And John Speaker Pelosi now responding to the president's comments tonight. She responded with a quip on Twitter, David, saying, quote, when the extremely stable genius starts acting more presidential, I'll be happy to work with him on infrastructure, trade, and other issues. So as you can see, Speaker Pelosi continues to look for every opportunity to provoke the president. David? Not over yet. John Carl, thank you. Next, the man known as the American Taliban has been set free tonight. John Walker Lynn was today released from prison on good behavior after his arrest after 9-11 in Afghanistan, serving 17 years for supporting the Taliban. He'd actually spent time in an Al-Qaeda training camp. Tonight, some authorities warn he still has terrorist sympathies. He will live in the U.S. ABC's Whit Johnson has new reporting on where. The so-called American Taliban, John Walker Lind, slipping out of this Indiana prison before dawn. He's an American citizen, right? Yeah. Well, right now, you are a prisoner. The Californian, who converted to Islam, captured in Afghanistan just weeks after 9-11, today released after serving only 17 of his 20-year sentence. President Trump saying he wanted to stop it, but legally couldn't. What bothers me more than anything else is that here's a man who has not given up his proclamation of terror. And we have to let him out. 
Am I happy about it? Not even a little bit. Controversy growing after government reports found that Lind continued to advocate for global jihad and made pro-ISIS statements behind bars. The family of Mike Spann, a CIA officer who interrogated Lind just before he was killed by militants, appealed directly to President Trump, expressing concern. It's even more shocking now that we know he's just only continued his radical ideas and ideologies and thoughts while in prison. Lind was released on probation for good behavior with restrictions on internet access, travel, and requiring mental health treatment. David, experts tell us that about 80 convicted terrorists will be released from prison in the next five years, and officials worry about how those individuals will be rehabilitated. As for Lind, we're told he's on the move to his new home in Virginia, outside Washington. David. Whit Johnson on the story from Indiana again tonight. Thank you, Whit. Next this evening, the owner of a daycare is under arrest tonight in Jacksonville, Florida, accused of leaving a four-month-old girl in a daycare van. She did not survive. And here's ABC's Victor Okendo. Today, the co-owner of a Jacksonville, Florida daycare facing a judge after allegedly leaving a four-month-old baby girl to die in this van in the blistering sun. Daryl Ewing arrested and charged with child neglect. From uh, about 8 a.m. to about a little after 1 o'clock p.m., so almost five hours. The sheriff's office says Ewing transported the children to the daycare yesterday and unloaded them, including two of the victim's siblings. But when their mother called in the afternoon, police say workers realized the baby wasn't there. She was found still in her car seat with temperatures outside topping 91 degrees. One mother who did not want to be identified telling our Jacksonville affiliate she pulled her children out of that daycare after they were once left behind. They were left on the same exact daycare van. Luckily, they were grade school age and could get themselves off. David, the Department of Children and Family says the daycare never told them they were transporting children, so that part of the operation was not inspected. David? Victor Akendo tonight from Florida. Thank you, Victor. Next to the growing tensions with Iran, President Trump was briefed late today about those Pentagon plans for thousands of troops that could be sent to the Middle East to meet the threat from Iran, according to the administration. Just minutes before that briefing, the president was asked if he's going to send more troops, and he said, I would if we need them. I don't think we're going to need them. So let's get right back to our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, on this again tonight. And Martha, the bottom line here, what are your sources telling you? Are more U.S. troops expected to be sent to the region? Well, as you said, David, the president made his comments before he had been briefed by Pentagon officials, and it is awfully hard for a commander-in-chief to turn down recommendations from his military commanders if they are asking for force protection for their troops. And that is what officials say this is all about, telling us that under discussion are more air and missile defenses, possibly more ships and reconnaissance planes, all they say to protect American forces and interests in the region. But David, in the end, it will, of course, be up to the president. David. Still unclear tonight. All right, Martha Raddatz, Martha, thank you. There is a sweeping new indictment tonight against Julian Assange. The Justice Department filing 18 charges against the WikiLeaks founder accusing Assange of working with Chelsea Manning in violation of the Espionage Act and putting the U.S. at risk by publishing thousands of secret documents. His attorney calling it an attack on freedom of speech. Assange is currently serving a 50-week sentence in a British jail, and he's fighting extradition to the United States. Next here tonight to a father from Utah who died on Mount Everest after reaching the summit and reaching a goal few have ever been able to do. Don Cash had quit his job to pursue his dream of climbing the highest summit on every continent. Everest was his seventh and final summit. ABC's Clayton Sandell with the final message tonight that he had just sent his son. When Don Cash reached the top of Mount Everest this week, he completed an achievement few ever will, conquering the tallest peak on all seven continents. But while taking pictures at 29,000 feet, hiking guides say Cash fainted from high-altitude sickness. Sherpas gave him oxygen and CPR and tried moving him to a lower camp, but he did not survive. Cash was 54, a family man from Utah and a hardcore climbing enthusiast who once lost fingers and toes to frostbite. He documented his journey to Everest on Instagram, including this close call. One of the last messages he sent was to his son. He said, I feel so blessed to be on the mountain that I read about for the last 40 years. 
Cash is the second person to die on Everest in the last week. And right now, good weather means peak crowds. This picture showing more than 300 climbers waiting in line to reach the summit. Tonight, it's not clear if Cash's body will be recovered or stay on the mountain that has claimed hundreds of climbers. David? Clayton Sandell tonight. Thank you, Clayton. And to the economy now, and the Trump administration is rolling out a new round of aid for American farmers hurt by the trade war with China. The $16 billion program will go to crop farmers as well as dairy and pork producers whose sales to China have plunged since both countries have imposed tariffs. This is the second for farmers because of the president's trade policies. There is still learning more tonight about that kidnapping in Fort Worth, Texas, an eight-year-old girl rescued from that hotel room. But tonight, what we did not know, police had been to that hotel earlier in the day. Here's Marcus Moore. Tonight, eight-year-old Salem Sabatka back with her family as we learn more about that heroin kidnapping <laughs> captured by a neighbor's surveillance camera. In a statement, the grateful family writing, we feel we owe a debt that can never be repaid. Police say 51-year-old Michael Webb drove up in a car and snatched the girl as she walked with her mother Saturday in a Fort Worth neighborhood. The incident sparking an urgent search. Tonight, we know officers with the Forest Hill Police Department acting on a tip showed up at this hotel, spoke with Webb, and even searched the room but didn't find anything. Hours later, family friend and Good Samaritan Jeff King spotting the suspect's car in the same hotel parking lot and Fort Worth police rescuing her. We got her. We got her. We got her. She's in custody. David, Salem's family says they will never be the same, but they will get better. Meantime, Webb is being held on kidnapping charges. David? Marcus, thank you. When we come back tonight, news tonight about that passenger plane off the runway, the decision by pilots just moments before, and the five states with the cheapest gas. And celebrity chef Mario Batali is due in court in Boston tomorrow to be arraigned on a charge of indecent assault and battery, accused of groping a woman at a restaurant in 2017. Batali, who stepped away from his restaurant empire amid several claims of misconduct, denies this allegation. New reporting tonight after the crash of that Miami air flight in Jacksonville, the plane going off the runway earlier this month. The NTSB tonight saying the pilots were unable to stop in time, deciding just moments before to land on that wet, shorter runway in bad weather. The average cost of gas nationwide falling to 285 per gallon. AAA tonight saying the most expensive gas is in California at 403, followed by Hawaii, Washington State, Nevada, and Alaska. Alabama with the cheapest gas, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Arkansas rounding out the top five. With the tonight, those two American classics and their comeback on live TV in front of millions. Not everything to script. Quite away, Glenn Miller play. Songs that made the hit parade. The bunkers began the same way they did 46 years ago. Those were the days. Only this time it was live and with big name stars trying to fill those big shoes. Those were the days. All the family and the Jeffersons playing out live. Millions watching Woody Harrelson as Archie Bunker. And Marissa Tomei is Edith. I'm so glad to hear you I'm say so that. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Using real scripts from the 70s, fearless then and now. Black people have arrived. They're here. I ain't letting them in. Jamie Foxx is George Jefferson. In that moment on live TV last night, that had everyone in the cast laughing. So all good before, all good, all good is live. <laughs> Everyone sitting at home just think their TV just messed up. <laughs> they were the best theme songs, and it was a surprise appearance from Jennifer Hudson bringing it back. that moment that connected the past to the present. The surprise behind the door. Marla Gibbs returning as Florence. Why the Sykes as Queasy. The ages is sent me. All of it a live experiment plotted in that studio and at home. Now 
was so much fun and really so daring to do that live. Thank you for watching here live tonight. I'm David Muir. Hope to see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.